welcome fellow photos to part two of the organic dice tutorial. Now this is where all of the fun begins. I am going to show everything in part two so there are in total only two parts for this tutorial. Right, so we are going to basically go from this to making all of the faces on, on the dice, all six sides to forming the cube now which is probably the trickiest part but I have been brainstorming um, a good way to do it um, last night and I think I have cracked it so we'll get to that later on but for now we are going to make each face or side of the dice with the numbers 1 to 6 now here we have, uh, we are looking at five of the important squares that we are going to make it on, which are this one here, this square here, this one here, 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 and here. Each one of these will become one side or face of the dice. So if we hold it like that, it's actually a lot uh, neater to see. So it's all compressed, so we have one, two, three, four, and five. The rest are excess. Number one gets made down here, which is the trickiest to get right. And I have made this model about seven times in total, but I can't think of an actual great way to do it. I'm going to show you exactly what I did to get near enough a perfect square on this. It's important to get a square because if you look at the designer's fold he has like a pentagon five sides where the rest are four sides it doesn't really make sense to make one with five the other with four so I will show you the square now it is important and um, you can if you want make a few of these for test folding and then just practice the one um, on all of them or even just pre-crease the, this bottom part right here and then just practice about trying to make the one but no you would need you would need this paper as well because we're going to use this to try and create the one but we'll get to that last so I'll show the first five I'll show one to five and then no yeah I'll show two to six and then number one at the very end and then we'll go about forming the cube so I think we will start off with number in fact, let me tell you where the numbers are or the sides. Um, you can look on the crease pattern, it will indicate uh, where each face gets made. So here we have number six. So we have three flaps. Flap number one, two, and three for number six. We have above it number three, across from it number two, then number four, then number six and then number one gets made here so I think we'll start off with number three so a good little challenge is before I show each each side of the face pause the video try and make three identical squares using the flaps or flap that you are given you may or may not need to use all of them so pause the video give it a shot if you managed it great continue the video if not watch what I'm going to do so now number three we are just going to use just this top there so if we just fold this up and again crease from each end like that and now we are going to divide into thirds going this way so again you just need to try and play about with guessing thirds you can even measure it for the sake of the video I'm not going to try and be accurate but you make sure you are as accurate as possible like that and then when you have done that you will fold this corner up to your exact accurate uh, crease and reference that you have done
then you will just fold it back to line up. And there we go, we have made side number three. We have three dots, just as we have on this one and on this one. So we have successfully done number three. If you manage to do that on your own, when I said pause the video, congratulations. Next, we will move on to the next one, which will be number four. No, number two, which is just this one here. So again, pause the video, try and figure it out on your own, and uh, come back if you couldn't do it. So now, we are going to fold up this flap. Again, crease right to the corners. Now, we're going to do something similar to number three, but we're not going to divide in thirds, simply because we would have three here as well, which we don't want, we want two. So we are just going to use this bottom square as a reference, and just fold this down. If, if you want to make it easier, fold this flap down, and just gently make the diagonal, you don't need to make it fully even get a roller and just gently score it because we want to use this as a reference to line up our 45 degree crease square like this. If you want to line up with the bottom or number three and then just make sure it's perfectly uh, horizontal. And then when you've done that just fold this corner up this intersection right here. And there you go, you have successfully made side two, where we have two on this side and two on this side. So fantastic job if you manage to do that on your own. Next we have number four, which is the easiest of all of them. We have two flaps like this, we have four corners, we are just going to fold one corner down and again line it up with the, the, the dot that you previously made because you want to try and make all, all of them the same size. Though there is an exception for number one because it won't be entirely the same size just because we don't have the correct amount of paper to actually effectively use to make it the same size so there will be a slight difference. Again there could be mo there, there could be multiple ways to make one but I'm just going to show you the one that I always do, the method that has always worked for me. There we go, we have made side number four. We have four on this side and four on this side. Now, the two tricky ones and then the trickiest one here, which is number one. So we all start off with number six. And um, so before I made this one, the last time I made one of these was years ago. So I completely forgot how to do number five but I remembered it being extremely tricky. I was mentioning to my friend Avi um, just how crazy it was to make, was it number five? Yeah, it was always the trickiest and then talking about number one. So we'll come to that second last, number one will be last. So we're gonna focus on number six now. On number six, we have three flaps. One, two, and three. And they all get formed on here. Now each flap, makes two of the six dots. So this will make two, this will make two, and this will make two. Now if you want to try it on your own, again, pause the video, go ahead. If you manage to get this, you have done a fantastic job and you surely know what to do. But for those of you that don't, let me just figure out what to do again. So fold the top flap up and then we are going to fold again, crease it to the corners. Like 
so, so the top part is white, the bottom is black. Now we are going to fold up and if you manage to make perfect thirds you want to align this edge on, on the flap number one with this black part right here. That will give you exact thirds. Again, for the sake of this video, I'm not going to be accurate. I want you to make sure that you are. And then when you've done that, just fold it down. So we have divided this flap three. And now this top part, my pencil man, helps. We are just going to fold up the corners. Now to make it a bit more realistic and better, don't fold all the way up. So it is basically one continuous black colour. If you want to make it slightly smaller. Again, while lining it up with the one above, or as best as possible. Simply because we have that differentiate of colour, which makes it look more real and more cooler as a real one would have. So again, on the other side, just fold it up, but not all the way up. And just like that. Now flap number two, which is the one just above it, uh, below it, and flap number three is here. So I'll just quickly think what I have to do again. Yep, so we are going to fold this part up. It's always quite tricky to remember what the colour layout arrangement is for these flaps. So on flap number two, we are going to fold it up. Now, because we need to divide this into thirds, essentially where this edge lies is one third, so we just need to fold this up that edge, which means that we only have one third made on this flap, we do not need to make the other one, which would be right here, we don't need to make it, this gets hidden, so there's no need to make it, and then the same again, just <coughs> fold the edge down, not all the way, sadly we don't have any white underneath this part to separate these colours. If that were possible, that would be so much better to do. Like that. So we have made four of the six sides, and then number four. No, wait, not the last two. Let me just think what I'm doing again. Okay, so I had to stop the camera to quickly remember what I had to do, which is fine. So we're going to fold this up and then fold it down basically where this edge lies because this is one third. Again, be as precise as possible. Like that. And then we are going to fold. And then the same again, just so you can see better. We are just going to fold down. successfully made side 6 of the dice, which we have side number 6 and side number 6. 
Now, number five, the second trickiest of them all. Pardon me. Simply because we have quite a few flat arrangements that we need to try and maneuver in place. So, if you can manage to do this when you pause the video on your own, fantastic job. It is very confusing. It can be when you are doing it for the first time, you're not sure you have all these flaps, um, how they should be used and such. But if you manage to do it on your own, congratulations, that was an amazing feat. It is one of the trickiest of uh, the fifth, the second trickiest, where number one being the trickiest. So let me show you how to do number five. So here we have flap number one. And then flap number two. And then essentially half a flap, which is a diagonal for number three. So first of all, fold this down. Fold this across flap number one. So fold flap number three down. Fold flap number one across. And then we're going to fold both edges up. So one and two. Up. Because when I was making flap uh, number five, for this one, I had to unfold this side, figure it all out, put it back together. That's why I have some glue stains here to re glue it all. Um, but yeah, I could not for the life of me figure out how I got uh, number five uh, when doing this. It just confused me so much. But then I realised, oh, that's how you do it. So fold this up and then fold up this flap. this one and then this. Let me show you that again. I'm going to take this flap, fold it over, up, fold it up, fold it across and down. And this is the layer arrangement for number five. Now what we're going to do first is we are going to do exactly what we did for number three. So we're going to divide these top two parts into three. So again, I want you to be as precise as possible when doing this. Oh, three, I was, I was doing two there for a second. Same on this side. Like so. And then we're going to take this top edge of the flap that we folded in diagonal up. And we're just going to fold that down enough so either it touches um, the, the corner of the middle dot or just around about it like that and then this edge here is already separated because part of the pre-creasing allows you for it which is that part there so we just fold this up which is the thickest part on number five so you will need to give it a good press and Get it. And just like that we have number five. So congratulations if you managed to make this on your own. That was not an easy task. Now we are going to jump straight into number one. The hardest of them all. And uh, I'm going to show you the exact sequence that I do. There is no proper sequence. Well, there probably is a proper sequence, but I don't actually know it. This is the way I've always done it. It's always worked for me. Um, I think I just perfected it last night when uh, doing this. Um, so uh, just to make sure I can show you nice and correct. So, first of all, we are going to fold 
this open. Again, if you want to practice it on your own, try it if you manage to do it. Congratulations, although I will recommend you follow this as best as possible. There is no exact proper references for this, so we're going to imagine them, and which, which, which I'll explain in a minute, to help make it. So we're just going to open up this flap and squash it, have it lined up. No, wait, 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 I did it wrong, I did it wrong. <laughs> okay, so, my bad everyone. What we're going to do is, I was doing that for a second and I realised this doesn't look right, but, okay, we've already made a mistake. What we're going to do is, we're going to fold both edges over and divide the paper in half. divided this square unit all the way up in half and then we are going to sink uh, spread squash this because how it's going to work is when we make the one side we are going to flip it around and essentially attach it on a side. So what this means is, let me show you for example, we have six sides of the dice uh, simply to form it all together we will wrap it up like that to make a cube. Makes sense? But what if, for example, we have four in the centre, which we have. Now these two on the side can be either, uh, doesn't have to be symmetrical, one can be here, one can be up there, it will still work. So if we look at it like this, we have four in the middle, and then one here, we can't have another one on, on this side because it will not form, we'll just hold this okay. so if we try and form this into a cube we have an extra flap up here but nothing covering this and there's no way, this is actually the number 3 so there's no way that we can bring this flap around here to cover it. So that's not going to work. So we need to make it so the number one is on the other side, even though when we make it, it is facing up on the wrong side. So we need to flip it around. And once we make it here, we will make a mountain fold. Flip it up. So the one will be here, and then if we fold this down and attach it here, then we have four in the centre, one on this side, one on the top, and then one on the bottom, and then from there we can form the cube. So that is the plan. Now there may be different ways that other people do this, this is the way I do it, it seems to be the best. Uh, from what I can see. So to continue, what we're going to do is we are just going to fold. Essentially we want to make the cube in the centre. So if we picture the diagonals. 
And this is only if you want to get it as precise as possible. We have the diagonals here. We want to have the cube corners on these diagonals. You basically want to have it in the center of this square right here. So when you flip it up, it's in the center. Now again, there's no exact references, you just want to fold over enough of the paper. Right, I'll just try this out first. And then it would be the same on the other side. So just make sure it looks identical. Um, you can always adjust it. Well, you really want to try and get it right on the first time because if you keep adjusting, you will have lots of extra creases on the uh, show. So I'm going to try this. So we have this. Now I hold it upside down just because it's easier to show this way. And now we are essentially just going to pull up this excess paper. excess paper here where we can use to adjust so I'm just going to flip it around and then valley fold on this just to help me figure out where the top corners of the one should be and again you want to try and make it so it lies on the diagonal just for aesthetics looks it looks much better if it is near enough and the center, which this one isn't exactly, um, this one should be a lot better. The new one, um, even the older one, didn't do this method, they did a different one. But I'll do my best to show you. So you might just fold this up enough. Diagonal, I'm seeing this hand directly on the corner, and here as well, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to crease that. I'm just zoom in. Now, the annoying thing with this is we don't have any extra paper to use to cover here. How easy would it be if we could just make extra paper and do that, fold it down and then fold it up, it would be life saving, it would be a game changer but sadly the way this works out we do not have extra paper. But the thing is when we have all six sides any extra paper is unseen, it won't get used, um, we can then use that to our advantage to help make that extra white layer on top. So when you think about it, this will get seen, 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 and if I flip it over, this will get seen, this won't. That won't, 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 that won't. So we can use this to our advantage and try to make the top white part. So what I did yesterday was, again, I'm just going to score the diagonal from, just to help imagine the reference, so here down. Let me fold over first and then do it just so I can easily line it up with this one. If that made any sense, but... So where I have scored it, and where it ends, is where from this point up, I want to hide all of this black, and you only need to hide it basically here the rest won't get seen but you want to try and make it 
as neat as possible so when I fold this over you will only see that. That is the plan. So we're going to use this excess paper and try and do some magic. So what I did was, now it probably won't lie extremely flat so hold it. Now I'm going to grab all these layers and make a 45 degree crease here. So essentially where this crease stops. Like there. So if you can see the one that I just drew, where it starts off from where this diagonal hits this edge of the white and then straight across. So I want to try and make a 45 degree crease from this corner here over. So this may take a few attempts, this is why it's good to have a little test fold of it, like that. So I'm going to crease it all the way. And again, because this doesn't get seen, we'll just use this to our advantage. And to some degree, in fact let me show you from the angle. and sort of force this over. So it first of all makes it square. So if we can get this in the end, fantastic job. That's, that is the goal we are aiming for. I may go a bit slant, which this does. You'll just need to keep adjusting it. Now, once I've done that, I'm just going to use this excess paper here and essentially line up this edge with this edge. Again, it won't lie perfectly flat, just try your best to get it as neat as possible. Now remember that this doesn't get seen, so don't worry if, oh no, I'm, I'm hitting all these layers, I shouldn't be doing that, don't worry about that. Again, do that while holding this down. Just in case. Now I'll tell you one thing, this is much neater than what I did yesterday. Well, obviously because I know what I'm doing now. So it makes it easier to try and line up. And so we have this. Now we are just going to see. Yeah, I did. So now we are going to lift up Yeah, so keep this part closed Don't open this up Keep it closed And then where this line was We want to open it up And then basically swivel it over On top of this edge Just essentially try to have it somewhat straight. Now the basic idea is you know, just open this part up. You essentially want to just squash fold it at the bottom. this crease goes, just make it happen. Like that. And if all that worked out, you should have a nice square, which should be in the centre of this half cube. I don't worry about any parts of these. And you could probably fill this up and it underneath. There you can. So that works. But that is the most trickiest part. There's no exact references to do it. To make them, you need to try and uh, judge it good, wing it. Um, and if you can practice it beforehand, do that. So that is what I did. Um, and that is the result I got. So it's near enough a nice square in the centre. So I'm happy with that. And then 
if we flip it around or upside down, hold it on both ends and then just mount fold it. Mount fold it down. We will have a nice number one. And just like that, we have made all six sides of the dice. Number six, number three, number two, four, five, number one, which has been flipped, and it's on this side. And now we can close the cube. So a few creases to make before we do that are a strong mountain fold here through all the layers, a strong mountain fold here through all the layers, and a strong mountain fold here through all the layers. Which is essentially all we need to make the creases that we need to use to form the cube. Now again, this can probably be done many ways. Again, this is just the way I do it. So I'm just going to quickly make these ones. Again, be as precise as possible when you're doing this. I will basically show you the formation of the cube and we will go from there. So what we want to have is this flap pointed out, I think originally when it's collapsed it's either... Yeah, no it is up, I think it's up. Yeah, but anyway it's up or if it's not, if it's in, if it's in then keep it up. We do have an extra edge here but I don't think that is actually necessary. But again, you can play about with it, you can practice it and see if it actually works. So what we're going to do on the sides with number two, three and six is we are just going to You can, of course, tuck this extra flap up and inside, get rid of it if it makes it easier, which I actually think it does to form it. So there we go, we have made three of the sides. Now the reason I'm not telling you to glue the layers right now is because I want you to be as comfortable as possible forming the cube before we glue any of the layers because if you glue the wrong layers there's a chance that you won't be able to, for, uh, to close it. Now I want you to essentially have the full cube collapsed and in cube form before you glue it. Next we are going to flip over so as you do this to this side we're going to fold this part up As we do that to here, we are going to fold this edge down and then we're going to form this side and then we're going to fold this flap up, tuck it inside. So again, we're just going to make the valley fold here, mountain mountain, tuck it inside and then a valley fold here and a mountain fold here. So that will tuck that part. So we have sides number three, two and six formed. We have side number one formed. Now this flap we're just going to tuck underneath but just the flap coming out of number three and tuck it underneath, glue that in place, that will hold it all together nice and neatly. Again what you could even do is make a cardboard cube 
and stick it inside, it will be easier to form it doing that. Now, where am I? I am so lost. Okay. Again, it's a lot easier when you have everything glued in place. We have to fold this edge under. Now, I just want to see if we can make this extra flat, so let me just fold it out. I don't think that's necessary because it would hit. Necessary. We're just going to fold it down, mount and fold this edge. So, mount, mount, valley. Just tuck it in as best as possible. This part gets hidden. And even though it doesn't look like a finished cube, this is the finished cube. We just haven't glued any of the layers. Now, when you're happy that you have gotten this, what I want you to do is... Oh, let me show you from all, all angles. So this is definitely a better sequence that I, I have done for any of these dices. I, don't, I didn't do it with this because I never really fully understood it, but now I do. Uh, it's definitely much more neater. So once you're happy with this, double check it all, make sure it's all correct, it's all in place. And then when you are extremely happy, unfold it. Back to the start and then start gluing all the sides down for each of the faces. Make sure they're all nice and neat and perfectly flat. You want to make this as flat as possible, so it's much more easier to form the cube, bar me, and it's a lot more easier to, and it's, it's a lot more uh, neater as well. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you this example, I'm just going to show you this as an example, so I am perfectly happy with this, I'm going to go ahead and glue every single layer that I know that I can glue, I'll show you the difference, and then I will form the cube. So as you can see, everything is all puffed out, it's all puffy. All the layers are spread out. I know what layers I can glue. I know what layers I can't glue. So I'm just going to go ahead and start gluing everything and hopefully you should see a massive difference after I have glued everything.
Thank you.